What is up everybody, my name is Tyler Potts and welcome back to the Muddy Wolf Studio channel. In the last video we created the, or the last couple of videos we made the movement and the jumping scripts for our player here. Little player controller so we can jump around, move around and obviously stand still. Now we have a cube right now but we kind of need a little player, a little player that runs, jumps and stands still. And we're going to create that in this video using pixel art in Photoshop. Um, to create basically um, this character, which is gonna, we're going to have a run animation. These are going to be very simple animations. I don't want to go too deep in on a um, on a tutorial, uh, but we're going to go for the very basics of pixel art and what you can do to create yours. So without further ado, let's get started. So first thing we need to do is come into Photoshop and click Create New. Now we're going to choose a 16 by 16 pixel um, documents over here, width 16, height 16 at 72 resolution um, and the rest of this is fine. So I'm just going to click create and we're going to have this tiny little box. So now I'm going to press control, or no, alt, sorry, and zoom all the way in. Now you might see that this is just a white canvas. If I just click on this little, on the right here, this little box to untick it and then create a new layer and call this um, player. Now what we're going to do is we're going to press I'm going to press B, which is going to get my brush tool. You want to select and make sure you've got the pencil tool, and you want to make sure the um, opacity is 100%, of course. Uh, and if you have a brush, you'll see it creates this sort of shit. Um, what do you call this? Uh, differing, not differing, like it's like opacity, so it's like fading out as you go along. But if you have the pencil tool and you draw, you can see you just get hard squares, which is perfectly fine. Now, I'm going to select a dark color for an outline, and at the minute we can't actually see our canvas. So if I press Command and um, the apostrophe on my keyboard, you can see now we've got this grid. Now, your grid might not look like this. So if I go to Photoshop Preferences and go to uh, guide line, Guides, Grids, and say, okay, you can go down here and say Grid, uh, Grid Line F316 and Subdivision 16. Um, and that will get as you a 16 by 16 grid. So you can't actually see that grid right now. But if you go to view, go down to um, show and you oh, show and you go down in, you can see pixel grid. Now that will show you all the individual pixels on your grid. Um, but I already have just a grid set up to do this. So that is fine. So now we've got a dark color. We need to create a little player. Um, I'm going to start off by just creating a simple head shape. And there you go. So that is a simple, very basic sort of head shape. I'm going to fill in the middle here. Um, and then I'm going to give him some eyes. So I'm going to take a darker green. And I'm just going to bring his eyes slightly over. So they're like to the to the right. So it looks like when we turn around, our player will turn. So this is just a little green green alien head boy. Uh, not sure of what we're, what we're going for here yet. But this is kind of what we've got so far. So let's create his little body. Um, it's going to be a very, again, with pixel art, you want to kind of create a very basic, um, just rough outline. It doesn't have to be anything special. And if you're good at pixel art, then make something even better. So we're just going to create his little feet there. He's got that. These are like his little army boys. Um, and this is what he's like right now. So it's just our base character. Now, this is cool. Um, there's not much to him, though. He's quite boring. Um, so let's add a little bit of shading in here. So using a darker color, I'm going to select this color, go to color, and I'm going to change these values. So I'm going to drop this down a little and bring this up to give me a slightly darker color, which is kind of going to act like shading. So first thing I'm going to do is shade under its neck, because um, obviously it's sunlight's coming from like, let's say above here, it's coming this way. So we're going to have a little bit of a uh, dark spots here. I'm going to cut shading right about there. And then I'm going to reselect this color. I'm going to go for a light color. So I'm going to bring this up to about 80 and drop it, um, the saturation down a little. Now we should have a brighter color. I'm actually going to make that even brighter. I don't think that contrasts enough. So I'm going to bring it to about 84 and drop him down to about 52. That should do. There you go. So that's a lot brighter color. I'm going to give him sort of highlights around here on this side of his face. Um, uh, I don't really like it coming out too much. I'm just going to keep it flat against the side of his head. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick an even brighter color. 
and I'm just going to highlight a couple more spots just to make it stand out a little bit more. There you go. So if you look a bit further away, this is what our pixel character looks like so far. He's got a little, little cool body. Um, we'll just let this under his neck is dark still. That's great. We'll go down this side with a bit of dark. But then we're going to add just a subtle bit of light on the left here. Let's select this. Let's not have that there. There you go. So you've got your little pixel like character. He's very basic, but this is what he is. This is him. Okay. So you've got your little character. Now I need to rename him to player idle one. So this is going to be his first idle state when we were not moving. I'm then going to duplicate this. So we press just uh, copy paste on my keyboard. I'm then going to double click and call this idle two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press M to get the um, rectangular select tool. And I'm just going to highlight an area of his head. I'm going to press command T and I'm going to press down on my keyboard pad once I'm going to hide the layer behind and then I'm just going to um, I'm then going to press uh, command D to deselect him um, obviously on Windows this might be different and I'm going to remove uh, this little corner bit here um, I accidentally removed the white from the back here so I'm just going to, I'm going to fix that up um, so make sure you have the right wood selected before you start erasing. Uh, and now his head kind of comes down. I'm going to select this and bring that there. Just bring his whole body down slightly. Um, I'm actually going to make his arms drop a bit. Or maybe not drop, maybe just drop one. And then if we now go to up the top here and we go to window, go down to timeline and select create frame animation. If you don't have this, you can click the, oh god, sorry. If, you, if it's SNK, so you can click this drop down. Instead of create video timer, you want to click create frame. Click create frame. You then want to go over to the right here and click make frames from layers. Uh, we're just going to create a white one, which we can just delete. We don't need that white one in there. But now we've got our main player and our second one. So if we press play, he kind of moves a bit too fast. So let's add a delay to this. Let's say about 0 0.5 seconds before he keeps moving. So you kind of get this simple bobbing up and down, ready to go sort of animation. I'm bobbing up and down in real life, so this is kind of feeling weird. Uh, but yeah, you've got this nice little animation. He moves like that, and that is just this idle animation. So it's not much. It doesn't really do much, but you can see where we're going with that. So I'm going to get his player idle 1. Oh, actually, I want to undo that. I want to select play, player idle 1, and I'm going to, again, I'm going to get these two, and I'm just going to quickly um, group these. Where's the group? Group from this. I'm just going to press Command G. Command G is so much easier. Command G, and I'm going to name this to Idle. I'm then going to copy Player 1, and I'm going to paste him outside here, and I'm going to call this Player Run 1. So Player Run is going to be super simple again. Um, it's going to be a two-frame animation. So I'm just going to hide Idle completely. Uh, I'm actually going to just close the timeline for now as well. So for this animation, we're going to remove his left foot, and we're going to do, and that's all we're going to do for this little run. We're then going to copy and paste him. We're going to go over to number two, and we're just going to add his foot back, and we're going to remove the other one. Oh, if it will let me. Oh, I think I erased the wrong one's foot. No, nope, that's right, and that's right. There you go. It's because I had him highlight too. So now he's going to have this two frame animation. Again, these are very basic animations. You can go in a lot more detail with these. This is just for um, my, just showing you what I'm doing. I'm just going to uh, delete both of these. Uh, and then I'm going to basically highlight number one for this one and unhighlight number two. And then I'm going to select frame number two and I'm going to unhighlight him and highlight the second one. So we've got this frame, so you can kind of see he's running. Let's speed this up a little. Let's make it 0 0.1 delay, so it's not really delayed at all. So look, he's kind of running. <laughs> you might, you could give him a little bob on his head or anything, or maybe blink an eye or something. But for now, again, simple animations. <laughs> simple game requires simple animations, and I kind of find this kind of cute. <laughs> so that is our basic run character. Now, for our jump, we literally need only one frame. So I'm just going to um, copy number two. I'm going to copy and paste it. I'm just going to I'm going to group one and two as well. I'm just going to create uh, command G because it's easier. I'm going to call this run. I'm just going to 
turn it off. I'm then going to call this player jump. So this one is just going to be his falling state, essentially. So when he's in the air, what he looks like. And all I'm going to do is remove his legs. I'm going to select, oh, B. There we go. Select that. And I'm just going to quickly draw. Where is his legs again? There we go. So I'm literally just going to draw his legs outwards like he's in the air. So he's just going to fling his legs sideways and it just makes him look like he's in the air. We could actually just completely remove his bottom two piece of leg to make sure it looked like both his legs are in the air. Um, but I'm not 100% sure which I want to do for the jump. Jump's always the hardest for me. I never know what to do because it always should be just kind of a one frame animation. I could make his arm like, I could make an arm stick up here when he jumps. And then half like his arm coming down there too. But I don't know. Does that look weird? I feel like that looks really weird. So, or maybe, <laughs> yes, that is it. His arms are both going to be flailing in the air. And that is that is it for his little jump animation. So that's all good. And this is looking cool. But we now need to, we now need to import this into Unity. So we need to set up some steps. So I'm going to create a new file. And actually, we need to kind of count how many how many sprites we have. So we have two, four, five, five sprites. And I'm going to put each um, animation on its own line or own row. So I'm going to click File, and I'm going to create a new character. So we have our characters are 16 by 16. We're putting two on each row, and we have five altogether. So if we go to 32 width and three times, so we need 16 times three, uh, which is 48. Um, on the height and now if we click create we should now have this screen here we can actually click on this layer create a new layer and just delete that background layer because we don't actually need that layer we just want this open thing now if i press bring up my grid again you can see the 16 by 16 grid appearing on the screen um and this is where all our animation goes so we're going to go in here and i'm going to go down to player one i'm going to copy him and i'm going to paste him in here and i'm going to bring him straight up here and put him smack bang in the middle of this um, and that'll be the first sprite on our thing. I'm then going to select number two. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn them all on, but I'm just going to go to number two, copy number two, paste number two in, and now he's a little squished boy. A little bit more squished. Uh, we're then going to go to run number one. I'm going to copy him, paste him onto the thing, bring him over to the left, and that is a little run, run boy there. Uh, let's get run number two, copy him, paste it over there, bring him over this way, and that is a run boy number two. And finally, my now favorite car uh, sprite is our little jump animation, which I'm going to bring straight down to the bottom here, uh, so he's sat at the top here. There you go. Now that's our little jump animation. I'm going to now save this sprite sheet to my desktop, or actually to my games folder, Actually, I'm going to save it to my desktop for now. I'm just going to call this uh, Green Boy. Green Boy. There we go. I'm going to click Save. And I'm going to click OK. And now this is going to save my little Green Boy to our desktop. Now, let's head over into Unity. So now we're back in Unity. Uh, what we need to do is import our sprite. So you can do that by um, basically going, finding your where your sprite is. So it's on our desktop. I'm just going to open up Finder. You can see Green Boy here. You can drop in the PSD as well. So I'm going to grab him. I'm going to bring him over here. And I'm going to drop him into our scene. Now he's going to be here, little Green Boy. And I'm going to drop him under Sprites. We can now head over to the right here. And we want to basically turn Filter Mode to Point No Filter. Because this will make sure the pixels look like pixels in our game. I'm then going to click on the Pixels Per Unit. And we're going to set it to 16 because our character is 16 by 16. His sprite mode is going to be multiple because there is multiple off him. And the compression is going to be none. Because it's pixel art, we don't need compression. We also could drop this uh, down really low to 256 because we don't need it to be huge. Now, if we click Apply, we can now go to our Sprite Editor. And we can click, well, if we drag this out a little, you can see we've got this slice tool. Now, if we click slice, we can do automatic, but we don't want to do automatic. We want to go grid by cell size and make it 16 by 16. So our cell size is 16 by 16. Click slice. And as you can see, we have a bunch of different boys. Now, I'm going to name this to player idle 01. And I'm going to go through all of these now and rename them. And now once you've renamed them all, I'm going to click apply. 
and now we'll be able to drop this down and see all our player idle stuff. So now on player, we could potentially um, just drop this in, but we're just going to double click on this player idle here. I'm going to drag him over to the right, and I'm just going to drop him in there. Now it's going to ask us to create a new animation. So I'm just going to go into our uh, folder here. I'm going to create a new folder and call it animations. I'm going to call this player idle animation and click save. Now that is going to save our animation here. And if we quickly hit play, you'll see our little sprite boy is going to be bouncing in the air. Now we need to modify this animation a little because he's a little too fast. So if we go over to animation, you can see it's over here. Now let's set this to about zero. So as we had in the edge star, I'm going to set this to about 0 0.4 and see what that looks like. Now if we hit play, you can see he's kind of bouncing. He's bouncing. He's bouncing, but we also need to grab this, copy this, and bring this over to 8. So now that there's an 8th one, and now you can see he's kind of got a bit more of a smoother motion. So he's bouncing, he's bouncing, he's bouncing, and there is that's his little idle animation. So that's cool, but now we need to set what is on here on our new on our player. So if we go over to our sprite, we can just select one of these sprites here. I'm just going to select player idle 1. Uh, I'm going to change his color back to white. And then I'm going to add an animator. So if we go to this player idle 2, you can see we've got an animator here. Now if you right click this and click copy component, we can go over to our player and just paste. So if we right click here and we just paste component that's new, we've got an animator on our player. So now if we should be able to delete player 2 hit play and see our little um our actual player be bouncy boy there you go he's now being a little bouncy boy now as you can see when we move left and right he's obviously not um he's not doing anything and also our box collider is now kind of broken because it doesn't actually match our player so let's move our player slightly to the left so we can see him a bit better um and let's click edit box slide so we're going to click this and then we're going to, I'm going to click this, I'm going to press Alt on the keypad, I'm going to bring it in to match up to his sides, which is perfect. And that is literally all we need to do. So I'm just going to hit um, unedit, and there we go. Now our box collider matches our player a little bit better. Now I'm going to move him back to zero on the X. But we need to add in our run animations and stuff like that. So let's actually create the run animation. So to do that, we're going to click... Um, well, we're going to click in here. We're going to click create new clip. Um, we're going to call. It, we're going to drop this into an animation, and we're going to call this player run animation or player run. Player run. Player run animation. Yeah, player run will do. Let's drop him in, and basically in here we want to select our player, and we kind of want to just drop in these onto our scene so we're going to say player sprite it's going to be run one and then sprite two we're going to drop it in about there now i think we want this a bit quicker i'm not sure how fast that's going to be that's a little too fast let's bring it up to about 0.2 that's a little slow <laughs> so let's copy this and put this about 0.2 let's zoom into our player and just click play and see what happens So he's kind of running. Now I feel he's a bit too slow though. So I'm going to select all of these and I'm just going to drag it in slightly. Probably to about 15. Now if we hit play. It's kind of more for running animation. We can adjust the speed of this later on. I'm going to put this to about 0.6 and make this about 0.12. That's a little better. Okay, I think that's fine for now for our run. Now let's actually go to our player and see where we've got this player idle controller. I'm going to go into our animations and where we've got player idle, the controller, I'm just going to name this to the player animation controller. This should update instantly in here. And then we can click on animator and see our player states. Now we've got a run state and we've got a player idle state. We now need to be able to go from our player idle to our player run. To do that, we're going to need some parameters. So I'm going to create a parameter and I'm going to call this float maybe a float or a trigger no this will be so there's multiple ways you could do this you could do this in script or you could do this in script but out of script 
I'm going to do this in script and have a boolean, which is called is running. And then we're going to right click and then click make transition from our player idle to our player run. We're going to select the little thing here. We're going to check has no exit time. And we're going to check um, this to 0 0.1. I'm then going to click on conditions and it's going to say it's running is equal to true. So when it's equal to true, we'll then be running. I'm then going to select make another transition and I'm going to go back to player idle. And I'm going to say, I'm going to do the exact same here, 0 0.1, and I'm going to say it's running, but this time I'm going to say it's to false. So now we need to be able to set our animator to go from run to false. We also need to go back to our animation and set up our um, jump animation. Um, which is very simple, we just could call it jump, click save, probably should have named it player jump to match, but we can rename it later. And then all we're going to do is get our jump and just drop him in. And that is it, so he's just going to turn into our little jump character. So we hit play, you can see his arms are up in the air, like he's just jumped, which is perfectly fine. Now we need to go back to our animator again, and we've got our player jump here. We're going to put him over here, let's zoom out a little, uh, bring that there, slide him up a little. Bring them in between. And now we're going to go from our player idle. We're going to make transition. Go there. And we're actually going to set two conditions here. So we're going to change exit time and fixed duration. We'll set 0 0.1. And what we're going to do to jump is we're going to say add. And we're going to say is running is equal to false. But we need to set up a new parameter called a boolean called is grounded. And um, is grounded if basically it's not grounded. So we're going to set another one here. We're going to say it's grounded is equal to false because he's in the air. That means um, he wasn't running, but he jumped. So we're just going to jump straight from the player idle to our jump. And then we're going to say um, make transition to player running. Oh, no, not to player running. Sorry, we're going to remove that right now. We need one from player running to our jump, which is going to say it's going to be the same again. No exit time, 0 0.1. Create the condition and we're going to say is running is equal to true but is grounded is equal to false. So if we're not grounded anymore, that means we're in the air, which means we're going to be jumping or falling. Either way, we need to play our uh, little <laughs> falling animation here. And that is going to go from running to grounded. Now, when we go back to running, we're going to say, again, is running is true, but also is grounded is false. We're then going to do another transition to player idle, and basically we're just going to say it's running, it's false, but it's grounded, it's true. So I think these are all right. So going to him should be false, false. Going from him should be false, true. Going to him from run should be true, false. And going from him should be true, false. Wait, that's wrong. Going back to player should be true, true. There we go. So now we also should turn off exit time. Make sure exit time is turned off for all of them. That's exit time. Nope. And 0 0.1 is normally a good one because uh, it's just quick. We don't want, we don't have a transition really. We just want it to be quick. And again here, just about 0 0.1. So that looks about right. Now, if we click on jump, we actually want to double click him and click loop time and turn it off because we don't want him to loop we just want him to as soon as he's got in this jump animation he is jumping um, which is fine now we've got this all set up but we need to be able to activate it in our script because right now if we click play we're just going to be stuck in whatever um, animation we are which is going to be the jump pose because that's the last one we were in now if we double click this oh we can't actually choose that um, but basically we're going to check off this and I'm going to go into our play and movement script. Now, we should probably create a new script for animation, but for this one, we're going to go to play and movement because it involves the variables in our play and movement. So I'm going to double click this and open it up in Visual Studio. Okay, so now we've got our play and movement script open. We want to basically activate our animations, but the first thing we're going to need is a public animator called Anim. Anim's our friend. <laughs> and what we ought to do is set up the first trigger. So we're going to say if mx or mathf.absolutemx is greater than 0 0.05, we're going to say anim.setBall 
And now we need the name of our boolean, which was is running, and we set it to true. Else, we're going to set it to false. So we're going to say false. Now let me explain this code here. So mathf dot absolute mx. All this says is turn if this mx is zero point zero five then return 0 0.05. If this is minus 0 0.05, so if we're going in the opposite direction, also return 0 0.05 because it will just turn it from a minus to a positive, a negative to a positive. So it always keeps it positive, so it gives you the absolute value, um, which means we can then compare it to a, which we'll probably put an F at the end of here, a string or a float, and we're able to um, say if this is bigger even if it's in the negative so either way we were running if we're in any direction we're running in so now we can hit save and let's go test this out so if we go back to our animator or oh, animator sorry go back to our um, unity we can then once it's rendered loaded scripts of part compiled you can see we now have the anim we can drag in our animator here now if we click play and we fall down we should be idling. For some reason, it's getting stuck on jump. Oh, it's getting stuck on jump because these are both set to uh, is running and is grounded is not in effect. So we need to actually set apart is grounded. So we actually have this right here. So all we need to do is go anim dot set ball is grounded equal to is grounded and all that's going to do is set animation to check if he's grounded or not grounded so again let's go back hit play now we should be able to see our player fall and now he's idling and if we run left and right you can see he starts running but for some reason it looks a bit weird let's hit maximize on play so we can see it a bit better and i'm going to dis i'm going to deselect my player hit play and I kind of want to see him run. Okay, so he is running. It's just so quick. You can't really tell. If you see, it's like moving super fast. Let's slow it down a little. So let's go to our animation. Uh, or animators. Oh, no. Animation. Select our player. And then let's select the run animation. And let's make this a little slower. So let's zoom out here. Let's highlight them all. And let's drag this out to about, let's say, 20 again so we had that before but i thought it was too slow let's hit play now as we thought now if we run you can kind of see it happening our player we currently have our player selected in the hierarchy so let's unselect or let's just turn off gizmos hit play i just want to see so you can see the run animation happening um I think it's just a little bit slow or my computer is a little bit blurry because of recording. But you can see it's moving, his feet are running up and down and it's working fine. Uh, which is good. Um, so that means we have our player movement there, but our player never flips around, he's always facing right. So we need, now need to go back here and basically check which way he's facing. Um, and to do this we just basically do what we've done here but without the absolute. And we could just say... If our player, if our MX is greater than five, that means we're moving right. So we can just say um, transform dot local scale is equal to a new vector three, and I think we do it on the X. We're going to say minus one F, one F, one F. That should be just one F, and then our if it's if, if we're less than, we're actually going to do an else if here. Well, actually, we could do this from zero because I don't think it really matters if it's from zero. So if it's greater than zero, do this. Else if mx is less than zero, then we want to set the x to be minus 1f and we should be facing the other way. So let's go back to our player here. Click play. Now you can see he turns around and faced away he's running. And as you can see, our jumping works. So he jumps from idling and he also 
transitions from um, running to jumping. So he kind of jumps in the air and you can see his little cuteness right there. I'm going to do so quickly just to test this. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to set this to about five, maybe about seven, just so we can see the ground too. Hit play. Just so we're a bit more zoomed in. This might help us see the player animations a bit better. And there you go. You can actually see the running now. So his jumping animation, you can jump up here, run left and right. And you can see his little animation, his little teeny little legs running. And we can jump around like a crazy person, which is cool. I like that. So that is how you do animations. Um, let's set this back to nine before I forget. Um, so that is how you do a running animation, a idling animation, and also a jumping animation in Unity. These are very basic animations. You can make these a lot better and a lot more complex. You just have to learn more about the animation timeline and stuff like that, um, and how to do better pixel art for Nikan, because I'm not great at pixel art. I'm just very basic. I just know how to create a character that looks like a blob, a green blob. But yeah, so that's it for this video anyway. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that like button, and we will see you in the next video where we will be probably creating some enemies or a platforms, maybe even doing the tile set for the map. So we'll see what happens in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys, and peace out. Oh, don't forget to keep buddy.